Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So in this lesson, we're actually going to make a start on the choose character function. So we've already created the scene, but um, we have to go back to the splash screen to begin with. And we're going to create another empty game object. And we'll just call this choose character manager. And then we'll come to the scripts folder and we'll create a new C sharp script and we'll actually give it the same naming convention. So choose character manager. And let's drag and drop that script onto this new game object. And then we'll open it up for editing. We'll just get rid of that. So we'll begin with up at the top here. And as normal, we'll put our little block of comments in. So our name and finally today's date. Okay, with that in place, we're going to come here. Now, this is going to be a fairly simple script, but we will be creating a second script that works alongside this one. So they work together. So if you're wondering why this script seems rather basic, it's because the second one will be created later. But we'll begin with a public and yeah, we'll make it of type static and of type bool and we'll give it a naming convention of robot black. We'll close the line off. Now, the reason for this naming convention is I'm going to use a series of robots for my characters in this fighting game. So you will want to change this naming convention to something that fits your project. I'm assuming that probably a lot of you will be using humanoid characters then you may want to give them real names or use a description that's entirely up to you and i will leave that for you to decide but because i'm using robots we'll give it a name of underscore robot black and we're using the word black because we're going to have different colored robots defines if robot black is selected and then we'll just copy this line and we need to create a bool for each and every character. So I'll paste it in a few times. In fact, more than a few. And how many you need to do this will depend on how many models you have. So I'm going to go through and I have robot white, robot red. And we'll tidy up the comments as we go as well. And blue. And we'll just keep going now. So the next one is brown. And as always, remember to update the comments as we go. So the next one's for the green robot. We're going to have a pink one as well. And finally for a gold robot. And we'll change the comment there. 
So let's come and we'll come to the void start and we want to put don't destroy on load open and close brackets we'll close the line off inside the brackets we'll put this referencing the the game object that this script is attached to and we'll put this into the comments so we'll say don't destroy this game object when loading a scene and then we're going to come here before the void start and we'll create a void awake function remember a capital A for awake so let's just open and close brackets again and we'll come inside the, the brackets now and we'll begin with our first robot and we'll make this equal to false let's close the line off and we'll put this into the comments so robot black is false on start up and again we have to do this for each robot or each character that we have and what we can just do is just copy the naming conventions and we'll paste them straight in just making things a little bit quicker so just a few more to do now and this script is just so we know which character which robot in this case the player has chosen to play as so all the things that are going to be displayed on screen such as the character models swapping out as we move our controller and select our character and any GUI that's all going to be in the next script this script is just so we know what character the player has chosen and obviously the second script will set one of these to true based on what the player has chosen so let's go ahead we'll put in white red blue brown green pink and finally for gold and that and this is a, that this particular script is now complete so let's just close the script close mono develop we'll wait for the script to recompile make sure there's no errors and then we'll drag and drop that onto our prefabs let's just hit play the splash screen should come in and let's see if we can just bring that up and um, this game object should now remain which it does when we switch screens I don't have my gamepad plugged in at the moment which is why it's not continuing so let's just stop that there and I think we'll leave it here for this lesson and we'll start the second script in the very next video so as always i hope you enjoyed this lesson i hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now